Hi, Hunt. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. Just finishing up week six of quarantine for us here. So, you know, the hair's get, this is probably the last time you'll see me with hair. So, like this weekend is, is shave time, shave the head time. Yeah, a lot has changed since the last time we talked. It's, um, everything's kind of starting to open back up slowly but surely. And um, I know everyone has mixed feelings on that. And it's definitely going to change the way that people are dating. We've gone from in-person to virtual and back to potentially in-person. So, um, so yeah, it, it's uh, an interesting time right now. And um, this is our first series on basically Battle of the Sexes. So we had this brilliant idea to get male perspective versus female perspective on um, first dates and asking people out and what's appropriate, what's not appropriate, getting the, the male versus female view. So we thought now would be a really good time, especially since people are starting to get back out there. So are you ready for my question? Seriously. Um, uh, both always and never. So let's do it. Okay, so I want to mention that we are doing this every Friday, uh, first Friday of the month. And um, this one, basically, we're just kind of testing it out. We're going to see what you guys think. If you guys have any ideas or comments, questions that you would like us to answer, we would love to incorporate that into our series of Battle of the Sexes. Um, I want to kind of start at, like, the, the basics. So... You know, I get a lot of questions as a matchmaker, and I'm sure Hunt does as a relationship coach. Who should ask who out? Should the male ask the female out, or is it okay for the female to ask the male out? What's preferred? So, Hunt, what do you tell your um, male clients when they ask? So, them? sure. So, first, the, the caveat. Everything is going to work at some point, and nothing is going to work at some point. It won't work one night. could be perfect, and they do the exact same thing the next night. And it doesn't work. So there's going to be a lot of generalizations, you know, and uh, and so obviously, you know, not everything is going to work the same way all the time. That being said, um, I mean, it's totally fine for either person to start the process. It's just that um, we, both sides need to put in work. And sometimes, if the woman sees the guy pussyfooting around and not wanting to come over and talk to them or something like that. She may take it upon herself to go over and talk to them, but, and which is all great and all good and make the first move, not a problem, but you want to make sure that he's also going to work to see you as well. Because as many of my female listeners know, sometimes the men can be as lazy as possible and try and get away with doing the least amount of work as possible. So you at least want to know that he's willing to put some work in. So one way to do that, like if you're out at a bar, assuming bars exist when you watch this, uh, that you can walk up, hey, you know, you start talking to him and like, oh, that's great. You talk for a little bit. You say, hey, I'm going to go back and check with my friends uh, for a little bit, but why don't you come up and find me in a little bit? So what you're doing is you're telling the guy that he's not going to be rejected, removing all the barriers for him to come up and talk to you but still making him have to do the work, at least meeting you halfway. You know, you're telling him, I will talk to you if you come and talk to me later. But if you're the one that's continuing to drive it and use all of the, the passion and, and the leadership right there, you don't know if he's going to do any work. So you just want to make sure that he's willing to at least do some work as well. Mm -hmm. So, uh, okay. So here's my thoughts on that. As a female, I believe that chivalry is certainly not dead. And personally, I would prefer to be approached and pursued. Preferred, um, totally, completely. Right, so, so I would tell gentlemen, if they would ask me, I would say, you need to be the one approaching her. Yeah, oh, I definitely want my men to approach the women. I think that there's a certain rhythm to the interaction that we have uh, heterosexual uh, interactions and so I think that 
it, it sets the stage um, to show that you've at least got some courage, if nothing else. It may be too much or too little, but at least you have something. Um, yeah. So, like, when somebody's asking you, well, what's the best way to approach? I've got this, got this girl, I've got my eye on her, she seems amazing. Should I ask her out in person? Should I text her? Should I call her? Should I um, use social media? Like, what do you tell your clients? I'm always a fan of as much in person as possible because that's where most of the emotions uh, and chemistry lie. So, if you walk up to somebody and ask them out, they, they're seeing you approaching, they're looking at you, you know, there's all sorts of other things in play here. Uh, but if you just get like a bleep on social media that's asking them out, and obviously it's going to be, you know, should, probably not just a cold call asking out, it just doesn't build as much emotion. But sometimes, like now, there is no way to see that person in, in person, or you're not sure when you're going to see that person in person or you don't want to pass up an opportunity. So of course each situation is going to be different, but um, again, what I teach my male clients is that women look for four things in a guy, confidence, leadership, image, and power. And we delve into what each of those words means and, and, and how to go about it. But just the act of walking across the room and, and under her stare and coming up and introducing yourself, that's 90% of the battle. And one of the things I try and teach my male clients is that I'm like, you know why bad boys get so much action? Because they just show up. They're just there. They're physically, they asked someone. That's it. That's it. They just showed up. So that's that. Just showing up is the, the lion's share of of the interaction. You know, once you're there, then, then it gets easy. Um, so yeah, I want to be able to not find ways of trying to come across as like dominant, but ways of coming across as self-assured uh, and comfortable in your own skin. I agree 100% with everything you're saying. As a female, if somebody approaches me in person, oh my gosh, that is so much more attractive than somebody texting. I mean, it's just like you're, you're kind of pussyfooting behind it, scared of rejection, not showing confidence. So I agree 100%. Exactly. It's like, not up, man. Come on, man. Just, just, just do it. Um, but this is, and this is one of the things that we work on with my guys is, is fear of failure, fear of loss, things like that. And one of the things I hammer into both my male and female clients, if you go up to talk to someone and it doesn't go the way you want it to, what did you actually lose? Nothing. Seven seconds. Seven seconds. That's it. Like everything else is in our head. That doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. And that doesn't mean that it's easy to get over it. But what it does mean is that we have control over how we want to feel about it. So once we can sort of teach and train ourselves that it isn't personal, um, that it isn't a horrible thing, that it can still even be a success, that opens so many doors to wanting to, to continue to approach that. Um, you know, it's all, it's all about just trying to figure out how to frame it in your own head. So, okay, we've, we've asked somebody out and we're um, past coronavirus. We can go to a, a restaurant, okay? So <laughs> we're there and we're on a date and things are going well and the bill comes. Who pays? The guy? Obviously it depends on which date. If it's the first date, I think it's a good idea for the guy to attempt to pay. Um, and I know, I know this, you know this, and we know how like it can be fraught because the woman be may feel that he pays for all of it, that there's a transaction implied, right. if not expected necessarily. So she may not want to feel like she owes anything and come at it as, as, as equals, which can be fine as well too. But then you, the guy might feel emasculated if he's not allowed to be chivalrous. Yeah. And this is what makes it difficult. Um, there's no clear cut answer for it. And like I said, if I take a, a former nun out for a dinner or a former stripper out for a dinner, they're gonna have vastly different 
um, ways of reacting to all of these things as well too. I think that it's good to offer, it's good to want to pay at the beginning. It's just a token of esteem, if nothing else. Just to, just to show that I am interested in you enough to shell out a couple of bucks. Say things like, it's not that you, you know, want your flowers and chocolates, though they're nice, it's you just wanna see how much that person feels that they value you. I, I agree with everything you said there. I mean, I tell my, my male clients like, you know what, if you go on a first date with somebody, first of all, I recommend coffee or cocktails. That way you're not going to have to make a huge investment. Like if it's, if it's just- Also like, yeah, exactly. Like one, I don't know if I like you enough to be sitting across from me for two hours and shell out 200 bucks, so. Right, right exactly. So um, I, yeah, I would tell my male clients like if, if it's going well, if you're interested, like definitely pay. If it's a couple cocktails, you're talking 20, 30 bucks, right? But if maybe it doesn't go that well and you're not interested in seeing her again and you can just tell both you guys are not really driving very well and she offers to pay or split the bill, then I think that's fine. If there's any interest though mm -hmm. in a second date, like chivalry is once again not dead. And I don't think there's any harm, even if the woman's um, a feminist in offering to pay. And I, I don't think that she'll... Um, Think of it as like, okay, what are you going to expect out of me by buying? Now let me advice? let me ask you a question. Yes. Hypothetically speaking, so guy and a girl start dating. He's a carpenter. She's uh, a vice president of a company. He makes thirty thousand. She makes sixty thousand. Who yeah. pays? On a first date, I still think he pays because it's not it's not about the money. It's about showing that you're interested and you are being a gentleman and you're trying to pursue her. Now, we'll get into- What about going later. forward? Um, we'll get into that later. But I, and going forward, I mean, yeah, you know, you, once again, I think dating going forward is about compromise. No matter how much money either party makes, like you don't want to feel like you're just with that person to front the bill. So then-, right. then And obviously it always comes down to Communication, communication, communication. So, so yeah, like as far as um, first dates go, is chivalry dead? I mean, like, do you tell your clients, hey guys, open the door, walk her to her car? Um, I mean, like, pull out her chair. What should a guy do? I think it, here, but here's the thing as long as you, as a male, don't think that that's transactional, because there are some men that also think there's a transaction involved with it. If I hold open the doors, and if I pull back her chair, and if I listen attentively, and if I do all of these things, then the likelihood of me getting laid increases. So I, what, I, what I want that person to do is just want to do those things naturally, because it's a nice thing to do for a fellow human being, whether it's a male or female or your grandmother or, or your date. Um, when, that is, when it's done like that for, for the sake of, because it's a nice thing to do, then it's a wonderful, uh, people love those um, touches. But if it's got some price tags attached to it, or there's just some like, and now, my lady, would you like to sit down? Like, then, yeah, then it's weird. So, um, but start, you know, it just, it's kind of like even fashion. My mother always told me it's always better to be a little bit overdressed than a little bit underdressed. Yeah. Case in point. Yeah, um, you look very nice, by the way, tonight. Thank you very much, as do you as well. I'm just bored of wearing T-shirts and sweats, so it felt fun to just get dressed up. As my daughter says, your face isn't smooth. Like, okay, fine, I'll shave. Okay. Um, so, well, thank you. But yeah, so it's better to err on the side of being a little bit more of something than, because you can always dial it back, but it's a little harder to kind of like ramp it up. And if you, you let the door slam on her face in that first five minutes, that's gonna be hard to overcome.
And I would say from a woman's perspective, like, absolutely. I mean, there, you have nothing to lose by holding the door, walking her to, to her car. Even if she's not interested, she can walk away from that date and say, you know what, this guy was an absolute gentleman and I have nothing bad to say about the date. Um, I, I think that some guys that I work with will go into it and be like, you know, I, I don't want to be cheesy. It's not cheesy. Um, well, it, and you know what, you know? The, the, the nice things that guys do up here, they order an Uber for their, their date. I love that. I mean, from um, the bar, from the drink. But again, here's where safety comes about. Sometimes what can be considered chivalrous in Omaha, let me walk you to your car or drive you home up in New York City. You'll be like, I'm not comfortable with you knowing my license plate or where I live just yet. Right. So, you know, and, and in each place, there's going to be that, 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 uh, that balancing act. But there's always ways to show that you care and try to just take an extra step. So how about uh, like physical touch on first dates? Um, should you kiss someone on a first date? I mean, what guys, like, is it okay for a guy to go in for a kiss? <laughs> so I've had two serious relationships, my wife and one other person. My wife and I became monogamous before we had sex, and the other person we had sex on the first date. So, you know, there's, there's, it's, it's a wide, wide what is right, what is not. I think one should be hopefully developing enough chemistry on that first date that, there, that there's a kiss. But you can't say, yeah, go for the kiss, because men are idiots sometimes and they'll just take that as a binary rule and the woman could just be sitting like this like the whole time and the guy's just you know not getting it and then at the end he's like you know so it is tough as well too and with these post me too things like i was reading an advice column that a woman set accused the guy of assaulting her because he went in for a kiss at the end Wow. And this scares men a lot because, and I know it's, you know, minuscule chances, but one, just one accusation or lawsuit could ruin a man's life forever. Mm -hmm. So it's scary trying to figure out what the rules are. Like, cause here's the thing too. What we want and what, what we need are not necessarily always the same thing. And I understand that a lot of the Me Too stuff needs to happen and it's, it's way late in happening and I'm glad it did, uh, especially when we're talking consent and things like that. But if you were hooking up with a dude and he said, excuse me, may I put my hand outside of your shirt on top of your breast? Can I get a yes? Thank you. A little bit later, may I unhook your bra? May I slide my hand up your shirt to your naked breast? May I put my hand down your pants? You're like, all right, that's it. I'm done, I'm done. <laughs> I, no, you can, you can leave now. And then we, some of us have fantasies of being ravaged, you know? And, and so trying, as a man, trying to find that balance is, is, is so difficult um, in general. But with these added layers of more women being in power positions and, and the echoes of Me Too, I caution my women to help the men understand a little bit where they lie because men typically don't have as a high emotional intelligence or dating IQ. Uh, and then you add a little bit of this confusion and fear into it. And sometimes you may need to guide them and let them know a um, little more obviously than you would previous that whatever it is, is okay. Okay. So, so say the date goes well. Um, make out session or not make out session. Like what, whatever happens, the date goes well and you're wrapping things up. Um, should a guy, should a guy ask her out like on the spot for a second date or should he wait and kind of text her, try to get cues? Um, I mean, what do you, like, what do you tell your clients? Um, it's tough because, well, the, 
the party line is don't ask them out for a date right then because that creates no emotional intensity. It becomes predictable. They know that there's another date. They're not going to be wondering if you're going to ask them out. It kind of removes that tension. And a little certain amount of tension is nice and it's fun in the beginning. So I think that, you know, saying something like, I had such a great time, I look forward to seeing you again. You know, leave it a little bit ambiguous, but let them know that you had a good time. Don't leave that part ambiguous. But, you know, when exactly you're going to hear from them, you know, leave it a little bit open. Um, that, that is the party line. Now, that being said, you have to kind of just feel things out on your own. Um, you know, I tell people, don't let a first date go more than an hour. You know, keep it short and sweet. But then we've all had those dates or times that, like, you just love talking to that person and one hour turns into four hours and, and you know, you just got to go with your gut. So, you know, sometimes it's just going to... You just, you know, you have such a great time and, and you've already talked about the things that you want to do in the future and you know there's a music festival coming up and you've already, you on your first date, make plans during your first date to see each other for the second time too. So, you know, there's no hard and fast rule. It's just basically try not to be predictable. Try to have some uh, chemistry and emotion um, involved with it. Yeah, I mean, I would say from a, from a female's perspective, like if the date's mediocre and somebody asks me out on the spot, um, sometimes that can be a little bit like, you don't want to let them down and you don't want to be rude on the spot. Oh, you know? yeah. but, but then you're more comfortable rejecting them via text later. So it's, it's a fine line. I mean, I think you know, like if there's absolute chemistry and like if you guys, like you said, talked about some kind of event that you guys were both interested in, like go for it. But if you're not really sure, you probably should just let it linger a couple of days and then pursue right, because you may need to she may need to digest what her date was like with you right and, and if you if you're trying to just jump on it too quickly it can accidentally come across it, you may look at it as confident she may look at it as desperate and grasping so yeah you know it's tough I, i'd say if in you know if in doubt like just don't do it the night of you can, you can, there are other ways of doing it. You can do it the next day, even if you really want to, but putting someone on the spot right then can have unintended consequences. So one of the things that, that I deal with with clients and feedback I get is like, okay, so he has been blowing me up since our first date and now I'm turned off. Now I don't really want to go out with him again because he seems desperate um as a male coaching a male like what do you tell them like should i text in between the two dates like if she's agreed to a second date should i be calling should i be texting every day like how much is too much how much is too little what's acceptable again each person has their own comfort level i have clients like zoomer clients that like want advice by texting and you know me as a gen xer i'm like I'm not giving you like emotional advice over text like call me and then they disappear and i'm like Ugh. so you know each age groups set of people are going to have a preferred way of communicating that being said 80 percent of the information um that we give to each other is not the words it's the tone, the body language, the, the reactions, the smiles, the expressions, et cetera, et cetera, the pheromones. So if you're talking a lot over email or text, you're losing almost all of the interaction. And especially if it's the beginning, I call it like, don't get your good out. Like you've got all of your stories, your first, you know, the stories, you're getting to know you stuff. Like you want to make sure that those are in person as much as possible. Mm -hmm. um, because, so that you can react to each other and you can see them smile and, and get all of that body language in. If you can't see each other, then I would make time to call. Because if nothing else, then at least you're getting the tonality, the, the back and forth and things like that. Uh, you know, texting and uh, email can be very dry. I mean, it's fun to send memes and gifts and stuff back and forth to each other. That's great. But 
don't be, you know, don't text each other like, you know, what was, what was your elementary school like? Save that until you're on a date. I, I agree with everything you said there, like 100%. Um, well, Hunt, it was awesome catching up today. And oh, yeah. I appreciate your input from a male and a internationally renowned dating expert and coach. Man of mystery. Of course. Um, so thanks again. And guys, thank you for tuning in. We are going to be doing a session next month on the first Friday. And it'll be more geared towards getting past that first date, what happens, how to, how to properly court somebody, what men want versus what women want, and how to kind of move into those next steps as far as introducing people to your friends, your family, date ideas, et cetera. So we hope that you guys are staying safe, and we know a lot will change within the next month versus what's going on now in the world to a month from now. Um, thank you for tuning in, and we hope you guys have a lovely evening.